this week's Pilch Point with Abram Pilch is proudly powered by PureVPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with PureVPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it is available for almost all of your devices. And you get a special price uh, and a 99-cent seven-day trial right now by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. All right, Avram, you have got a demo for us that you teased well, at the top of the show. And we're <laughs> going to cross our fingers let's, on this for let's you. Let's see about that. <laughs> um, all right, first of all, I'm going to take pull out the part that Part that where this is, it doesn't work yet for sure and uh, this over here first of all what's really important isn't what's this little setup what's important is this board so which i'll pull out in a minute but if i pull it out it messes up the whole thing so maybe i won't pull it out um this is a raspberry pi pico and it just this is a new board a new raspberry pi board that just came out this past thursday but wait it is not like any other Raspberry Pi board that's ever been made because it is not a Linux computer. Most Raspberry Pi boards, uh, except for this, are, um, you know, they're full-fledged computers. They run a version of Linux or there's various operating systems you can install on them and you can, you know, use them for anything you use a computer for, uh, pretty much. You can, you know, surf the web, you can install lots of programs, do your spreadsheets, whatever, and you can use them for robotics projects and things like that. This is a microcontroller board. So it is more similar, it is similar to uh, Arduino if you, if for the folks who are familiar with that. Uh, so uh, it has 40 pins and it has, and it can be used to control lights, motors, sensors, things like that. Um, the advantages it has over a regular Raspberry Pi are, uh, first of all, it boots, it doesn't have an operating system, so it turns on right away. Um, there's no booting. Uh, and it has built-in analog to digital conversion. Uh, it's very small and it's very cheap. It's only $4. So wow. uh, it, it uses Raspberry Pi's own CPU that they, is the first CPU that they have made, the RP2040, uh, which uh, for a microcontroller board is powerful. It is 133 megahertz uh, dual dual core. Now that's for a microcontroller board. If you were to try to, you know, if you had a, you know, a real computer that was running at 133 megahertz, you would say, "Wow, that's that's." taking me back to 1993 or something. I was going to say, you wouldn't even get... a microcontroller board, that's good. You'd barely get uh, Windows 3.1 yeah. running on that. Yes, but that's not what this is meant to be. Um, Arduino, by comparison, I think is something like normally like 32 megahertz or something. So uh, this is significantly faster than Arduino. It has two megabytes of, of storage, and it has, um, I think... Oh, some somewhere over 300 kilobytes of RAM, which for the for this kind of thing is is a lot because the goal is, you know, really get things like lights, motors, and joysticks running. Use very low power, uh, be cheap, be easy to program. You can program this uh, in MicroPython or in C, and apparently there will be other things coming. Like Arduino has announced that you'll be, I think, they'll be able to do some Arduino language. The other thing is anybody can just about anybody can make a pico board a pico board so and they can do make it look different with different number of pins different size and features like wi-fi uh so a lot of companies are coming out with their own uh very shortly all the usual uh hobby electronics companies adafruit pimeroni i think spark fun um arduino is going to come out with their own one I'm sure I'm missing a few. And some of these are coming out with different models. Some have more storage, some have wi wireless on them uh, that this doesn't have, that the first party uh, model uh, doesn't have. Uh, but so this is an entire ecosystem of stuff. Uh, and you and there are already a lot of accessories coming out for it. Uh, I have a big owner in with uh, Pimeroni 
which has made a, made like a little keyboard that you can power one of these and uh, an explorer board where you can plug it in and you can get like a screen and motors and things. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun and uh, people are going to find lots of ways to use this with robotics and things like that. I mean, it's not like a regular Raspberry Pi. It's not going to do like artificial intelligence or something. Uh, but uh, there's a lot that it can do because it is able to use a system called uh, PIO, PIO, to give that allows it to do just more, way more advanced uh, stuff, like actually output to a monitor if you attach a board to do that. Not sure why you'd want to do much with the monitor, but people have actually been able to uh, to play video off of it. So um, very interesting. So what I have here, and I have it all connected up on a breadboard. So I think we may run in. Um, every time I try to do this, some wire is not working. But this is supposed to be um, a game of Simon Says, of Simon, basically. Like remember that old game, that old board game. Absolutely. We have the lights that turn different colors. Boop. So let's see. Boop. So I have so I have four different colored lights here on my breadboard, red, yellow, green, blue. I have a joy instead of buttons to touch, I have a joystick that you would like move up for green, down for red, left for blue, right for yellow. Uh, it gives you a random pattern and a buzzer that beeps the tones. So let's see. So it did green, yellow, yellow, right? So if I have my joystick facing the correct direction, it would be green, yellow, yellow. See, it just flashed saying, good job. And now it's gonna give me, now it's gonna be four. It goes from three to four every round. It just goes up by a number. So I forgot what, I just forgot what it was. So, oops, I got it wrong. It flashed. We're still working. My son and I are still working out some of the kinks. Like we want to make it to play some kind of song when you, uh, you know, when you lose. And we had, and this is something I was trying to get done tonight, but was not working for me. Gotten this seven segment mm -hmm. uh, thing here where it's to actually act as a scoreboard and uh, was trying to get this to work and it wasn't working for me. Uh, but um it's just kind of a demo of what you can do so we program this in MicroPython, which is uh, basically the same thing as python it's just uh, made for this product and you program it on another computer so you take your windows computer or your mac or even a linux computer or even a regular raspberry pi uh, you connect it by usb to this and then you can install and then you uh you can write the code to it using an editor on your computer and run it. Um, you can also have it run independently because if you create a file called mine.py, main.py, it'll just run that program when it boots. Mm -hmm. um, so when you turn, I shouldn't even say boots when you turn it on. So um, that's that's kind of the the gist of it. Uh, this is actually upside down because the pins are facing into the board. Uh, it, it comes without the pin soldered onto it. So you have to solder your own. So I soldered them upside down on purpose, although I don't think they recommend that. <laughs> uh, the reason I did that is because the labels are on the, the labels for each pin are on the bottom. Uh, so you can see which one is for ground and which one is for, because the 40 different pins, some of them do different things. Yeah. You know, some of them are ground, some of them are 3.3 volt. Uh, um, Interestingly, this primarily gives out 3.3 volts, not 5 volts, which is what Arduino, I think, gives you, I think, a choice or gives you 5. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, this is just ridiculously cheap, um, and it's spawning an entire new ecosystem. Um, so uh, kind of exciting for people who are electronics hobbyists. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, like, like you said, the... Raspberry Pi has kind of generally played in a in a different sandbox, a similar but a different sandbox. You know, it's a a fully functioning computer uh, versus versus what Arduino has has been, and it you know been a, a 
microcontroller, a, a device controller, a good centerpiece for a for a project, but not um, a full interactable computer on its of its own. Uh, and so, for Raspberry Pi to get involved in that space, I think is a good thing because we've been we've been kind of limited, right, to to yeah. Arduino, and you know, like we always say, uh, competition in a space uh, brings brings wow. new ideas. Well, so this is a, you know, for folks who are not familiar, this is a regular Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi 4. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see a huge difference in size, also a huge difference in price. This is right. at least $35 versus $4. But beyond that, um, I wanted to reach for somewhere around here. I have a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is, you know, all kind of comparable in price. It's $5 and it's a full-fledged computer, uh, but... It doesn't have analog to digital conversion. It boots rather slowly. It's not really, you know, you can use it to do a lot of these things, and a lot of people do, but, and it has Wi-Fi, so that's a plus. Um, but, you know, this is really made for, there are certain things that having a microcontroller board is is really good for. You could use this together with a, Raspberry, with a regular Raspberry Pi. Mm -hmm. um, but this is really good at, for doing certain thing for doing certain things that don't require a lot of processing power, um, but you know are are moving around, you know electronics and uh, Arduino. Typically, I mean they make different ones. First of all, the first party Arduino boards cost a lot more than four dollars. Yes. Second of all, um, the main board that people use the Uno. Um, well, the Uno is a lot bigger than there's the Arduino Nano, I think, mm -hmm. which is smaller and more comparable in size to this. But I think those only have something like 32 kilobytes of storage. So maybe you could fit one small program on them. This has two megabytes. You could fit quite a bit for two megabytes. And some of the third party ones that are coming out are going to have even more like 16 or 32 megabytes, right. which is you know like nothing if you were dealing with media files or an operating system. But is a decent amount for doing simple, simple programs that, like Simon says, program that I just did was, you know, what, like a hundred and hundred and forty lines of code. Right. So, um, and, and you know, a lot of times these types of things are used as, as device cluster controllers that are controlled by something larger. Like you said, you could use this in conjunction with a regular Raspberry Pi. You know, you could have a regular Raspberry Pi be be your your brains of your system making making decisions, running running AI things like that, and uh, based on certain decisions, could send out commands to 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 cluster controllers to do certain things. You know, maybe ones in charge of all the motors and ones that make a thing roll, and ones can control a a turret or you know, however you want to configure your 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 clusters obviously i'm not talking on a small scale i'm talking on a larger scale but uh you know you, you see you see that kind of of setup in in robotics and stuff like that all the time where these these little controllers are used as as a uh, essentially uh relays <laughs> to 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 be in charge of of a cluster of of sensors or or whatever so that they take the they take the onus off of the the main system, and that just deals with with the output. So there's lots of ways that also, this could could be used. Also, I think the fact that you program, I mean, Arduino primarily is programmed in Arduino language, which is, I think, I think it's some kind of variant of C, mm -hmm. but it's not something that people use in a lot of other a lot of other places. Right. This is using MicroPython, which is pretty much Python. Python is being used in so many places. I mean, it's certainly being used on the regular Raspberry Pi for a lot of stuff. Um, and so you, you know, you have a chance to write programs here that you could maybe take to other hardware, mm -hmm. or at least you're using a common language uh, with them. So I think the fact, I mean, granted, you can also program this in other ways, like with C, but I think um, the fact that you can program with MicroPython really makes is really appealing because you can you're using more of the standard programming language for it too. 
Right. Absolutely. Um, in fact, my, my time uh, on the Arduino was done entirely in C because I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to learn a variant. Uh, and I already knew C from ages ago. So yeah, I, I totally understand the idea of, of wanting something that's, that's more universal. You know, C is, is the, the universal hardware language. So, uh, and, and Python is a, cousin <laughs> of C that has has become really popular in a lot of a lot of hardware applications as well so and being being able to be used across platforms like that you know I think makes them way more attractive than say the Arduino language which is very focused on <laughs> on an ecosystem uh, so are these are these things out now or are they are yes. they coming okay yes as of Thursday, as okay. of last Thursday. Now they're sold out in a lot of places. <laughs> of but course. Yeah. Um, if you want to buy one, uh, there are a few places. So first of all, speaking to the U.S. audience, uh, Adafruit sells them, although I checked today and they were out of them, but they, but they were in on Friday. So I will be, I think they're only letting you buy one at a time too. Uh, uh, Chicago Electronics, Chicago, chicagodist.com has them uh seed s-e-e-e-d uh has them but uh it's is, it, is that it's seed or seed studios but those are pre-order um if you don't mind ordering from across the pond uh Pimeroni has has them and they have all these accessories so you know i, I feel like in a way like i'm, I'm kind of like I should just have money taken out of my paycheck and sent directly <laughs> to them because I keep ordering more stuff. Um, but uh, they had not only do they have the boards, but they have they're the first to really have a lot of really cool accessories. And they're they were uh, on on my podcast show on Thursday, and and we did a whole broadcast where they were showing all the stuff that is already for sale and some of the things that are going to be for sale in the next couple of weeks. Um, that are so they not only do they have the pico but they have a lot of pico uh boards and accessories and things and then the third party boards um a lot of them are you know being listed but you can't buy yet as of today but right. might be any day now um adafruit is going to have like two or three different ones one is a tiny one that's like half the size of this um you know, one is the same size as their feather board, which is another microcontroller uh, and has the same pin layout. So you can use their feather uh, ecosystem of, of, of add-ons with it. Nice. Um, you know, Pimeroni uh, is going to have also a really tiny board and then they're going to have one that has Wi-Fi in it, a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and, they're, and also it's going to come in different storage amounts. Um, Arduino is going to have one of their own uh so this is a you know this is just had an incredible amount of third-party support even in its first few days granted i'm sure i'm sure all these companies had uh at least several weeks if not months of notice but right. um you know even in the first few days there's a lot coming out and i imagine it's just going to skyrocket uh, and i think one reason is not just because it's cheap not just because uh it can it's a microcontroller a nice microcontroller board although you know there are other there have been other boards that could do the same thing besides Arduino there's been feather there's been you know a few others but uh the fact that it's from Raspberry Pi um and now it's this open stand this standard where anyone can build one I think it's um I think it, it's really poised uh to become a standard the, the level of support for it is probably going to be through the roof uh, in terms of just the amount of people making tutorials for it, making, you know, yeah. accessories for it, etc. So, yeah. And being a, you know, speaking of which, yeah, go, be, being have a, a page of just that being an ecosystem is a, it, it, you know, is going to yeah. be a, a big thing. You'll see all kinds of not right away. You'll see you, the companies start to test the waters, but eventually you'll start to see these really weird 
uh, variants of it, you know, like we did with the Arduino, right? When it for when company first started making stuff, they were all pretty pretty normal, and now you've got all kinds of weird thing you know, variants of Arduino that have have you know rechargeable battery packs and all kinds of you know variants of it. And I think we'll see the same thing here because it's Raspberry Pi and people love the the company and I I imagine people are going to jump on the ecosystem hard as we can see from the fact you can't buy them right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we have a, anyway, if you want to learn more, we have a giant hub of information on tomshardware.com. Uh, we've got a slew of tutorials that we're putting up. Uh, we're putting up new ones every day. We've got you know, the review, we've got how to get started, uh, all that, all, and of course, information about the different accessories, uh, and boards that are coming out. So, uh, you know, we want to be your, 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 your Pico central to, <laughs> to find, uh, more information. Very cool. Well, I'm excited about this thing. Um, as soon as I see availability somewhere, I will have to buy one myself to add to my collection of many, many, many Arduinos and Raspberry Pi devices. Uh, not quite yeah. not quite like yours, but it, it's up there. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I've now measured it, and I have about 20 Raspberry Pis. Uh, okay. It, and I, I always need more. Like, this is the only one I have sitting around that's not committed to something. I, I've got... I've got a bunch of Arduinos, but not all of them are in use. So that that came about when Radio Shack went out of business, and I just cleared a, a shelf into a box. So <laughs> not quite the same thing. But <laughs> as always, Abram, uh, thank you. That is uh, is definitely super super interesting, and I uh, look forward to seeing what we talk about next. Hello YouTube, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Pilch Point with Avram Pilch. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to our channel, and of course hit the notification bell, since subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, and if you've got topics you'd like us to discuss in the future, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways that you can follow our content. You can find all of that by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.